Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. If you are a smart contract developer, make sure to watch this video to learn how to prevent re-entrancy attacks. By watching this video, you will once and for all understand how to write a secure Solidity code, secure smart contracts and make sure that your smart contracts can never be hacked with re-entrancy. So without further ado, let's get started. So before I will teach you how you can avoid re-entrancy attacks and make sure that your smart contracts are secure from re-entrancy attacks, first we need to understand what is and what are re-entrancy attacks. Re-entrancy attacks happens anytime and can happen anytime you make an external call from your smart contract to another address or another account. It could be a smart contract or an EOA account. It happens when you make an external call or send if to another account or a contract because once you send if to another account, it can trigger a fallback function that will run code on the blob blockchain. So anytime you make an external call, either if it's like a call to a smart contract or to a EO account, or you just send ETH to another account, and you do that before you update the state, before you update the storage, the state variables, either if it's integers, addresses, booleans, or mappings, or arrays, doesn't matter what, then your code can be vulnerable to re-entrancy attacks. Re-entrancy attacks can lead to very critical hacks on your smart contract. So you want to make sure to follow this guide and understand how you can avoid them and basically don't make those mistakes and make sure that your contract is safe. The thing with reentrancy attacks is that it comes in so many forms. We have simple reentrancy attacks, advanced reentrancy attacks, cross function reentrancy attacks, cross contract reentrancy attacks, and sometimes cross blockchain reentrancy attacks. But the good thing is that once you follow this simple solution, you can make sure that your contract can never be hacked with reentrancy attacks. So the one thing that you should do to avoid 100% reentrancy attacks is always follow the CEI. CII stands for Checks, Effects, Interactions. And it's a solidity code pattern that you should always follow when it comes to writing your functions in Solidity and it 100% gonna reduce the attack surface and make sure that your contract cannot be hacked with re-entrancy. The way it works that is whatever function you're gonna write in Solidity, you first gonna do the checks. The checks means that you check first all the things that are not dependent on you. It could be parameters that the function receives, it could be message data like message.sender, message.value, and it could be the contract state. You check the state, you validate things. This is called the checks phase, and this is step one, checks. Then, once you've done the checks, you can do the effects. Effects means that you change, you make an effect on the contract, on the state of on the contract. So, as you can see in the following example, the checks, we first make sure that the balance of the message sender, the user sent a transaction, is greater than the amount that he wish to withdraw. You can see the amount is an arbitrary parameter that was sent to the function. We first check that his balance, the one who sent a transaction, is greater or equal to the amount. Then the second step is the effect. We change the state, we change the storage. So in that case, we reduce the amount that the user wishes to withdraw from his balance. We change the mapping of the balances and reducing the amount. And only after we did first the checks, then the effects, then we do interactions. Interaction means interacting with external accounts, with external smart contracts or EOA accounts, either if it's sending ETH or making external calls. And this here you can see message.sender.transfer is an external call because we are transferring Ether to the message sender to the user who sent the transaction, but we do it only after we did the checks and then we did the effects and now we've done this, then we can do the interactions. That's very important because in these interactions, the user, the message sender, if it's a smart contract, 
he can call again the function and basically execute a re-entry set tax. And if we always follow this order of checks, then effects, and then interactions, then he cannot do it because he can call the function again, but it's not gonna matter because the state was updated, all the checks has been done, and re-entry won't be possible. So checks effect interactions is the number one way to prevent re-entry attacks. And when you implement your smart contracts in Solidity, you should always keep that in mind and follow this coding pattern. There are additional protection measures for re-entry attacks, but it's always important to understand that CEE, checks effect inter interactions, is the most important one. We have you can apply extra protections, but by applying the protection measures that I'm going to present to you right now. But remember that these methods that I will show you right now, they are not enough because some other forms of re-entrancy can bypass them. Some other forms like cross-function, cross-contract, read-only re-entrancy. I'm not going to deep dive into all these kind of re-entrancy attacks. If you want to learn more in depth about smart contract hacking and re-entry attacks in all its form, make sure to check out my complete practical smart contract hacking course and join the amazing Blockchain Security Academy community. This is if you want to level up your smart contract security skill, make sure you write top-notch smart contracts and you are able also to audit smart contracts, maybe become a smart contract auditor. So these methods that we're gonna see now, they're gonna help prevent re-entry, but they are not enough. You should always follow the checks, effects, interactions pattern. The first method is mutex or lock. Mutex or lock is basically a state parameter that we define within the contract and it keeps tracks of the function execution. You can look at it like a, a button of on and off. So it's basically going to prevent from the user entering the same function again. So you can see here the example. First, we define here the Boolean. It's a Boolean variable, which we call lock. Then we can define this modifier over here that is called re-entry guard. And the first thing that we do in this modifier is make sure that the locked parameter, the Boolean is false. Okay, so first we make sure that it's false. If not, we're gonna revert the transaction. Then we're gonna turn it on, basically trigger it on to true. We're gonna do this underscore, which basically means running the uh, functionality that is protected by this modifier. And only after we finish the functionality, then we turn it off again. The locked parameter, we turn it off, we change the Boolean to false. And then we can apply this re guard modifier on step three on any function that we want. And this reentry guard modifier is gonna prevent the user from entering the same function again. Because if you think about it, once the user calls the withdraw if function, first, before the functionality is gonna be executed, this modifier is gonna be executed. So if it's the first time the user calls this function, then this require statement will pass and the transaction won't be reverted because initially the locked Boolean will be false. Then we change it to true. And once we change it to true, we go, we run the execution, the functionality of withdraw if, right? So here will be the, uh, the functionality. Somewhere here will be the external call that we will call, will hook the malicious contract of the hacker that is trying to attack our contract. And he might try to enter again to the withdraw if function. The thing is that now we are executing this line of code and the re-entry guard will be applied again. If he re-enters the withdraw if, the re-entry guard will be applied again, which means it will run the modifier first on the second entrance. And in the second entrance, this requires statement won't be true because we changed lock to true before. So if locked is true, this requires statement is gonna revert the transaction, which means that the hacker won't be able to re-enter the same function twice because it's protected by this re-entry guard. If it's a legitimate transaction that is not trying to hack the contract, there is no problem because once the execution is finished, 
then the locked parameter is being changed to false again. So this modifier will prevent reentry attack but it's not enough because sometimes there might be cross-function reentry. Maybe this function is protected by the modifier, but there is another one that is important for the state that is not protected by, by this modifier. Or maybe it's a reentry cross-contract reentry attack, where one contract is protected and another one is not protected by this modifier, but both modify the same state. So reentry can come in many forms and just using this modifier Fire and mutex is not enough. You should always follow the CEE checks effect interactions pattern. Instead of implementing this mutex and modifier yourself, another alternative would be using the Open Zeppelin Reentry C Guard library. So you can simply just import this library to your smart contract, then inherit in your contract form the reentry C Guard.sol file from the contract so you can use all the functionality and once you inherit this reentry cigar then you can use this non reentry modifier on your solidity function so instead of creating this reentry cigar modifier yourself open zeppelin already created this modifier for you you can just inherit the contract and right away use this non reentry modifier to protect your functions and under the hood this contract does the exact same thing that we just explained in the mutex lock slide as you can see it defines two constant not entered and entered and then there is a un256 which is the status are we inside the function or not if we entered it already or not then they create a modifier non reentrant which calls to functions non reentrant before execute the original function and then non reentrant after as you can imagine non reentrant before gonna basically validate that the status is not entered because it's it entered it means that we enter the same function twice and we want to revert the transaction together with this error message then we're going to change the status state variable to entered to the the uint2 now after we run the function we simply just gonna revert back the status state parameter to not entered so the next time someone calls this function uh, in a new fresh transaction there won't be a problem so this is the same exact logic that we show how we implemented it ourselves but we don't need to do so because open zeppelin did it for us now that's about it this is how you can protect against reentry attacks remember that using open zeppelin reentry guard is not enough implementing your own mutex and modifier is not enough you should always follow the checks effects interactions pattern now if you enjoy this video and you want to get exposed to more educational videos about smart contract security make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification button and of course smash that like button. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.